Jake, thanks for the podcast. No worries, thanks um, for having me on, man. And um, thanks for letting us into your home. You're very welcome. Um, so we had a good chat earlier and um, there were some really interesting things that came out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, what I'd first like to ask you is, um, how did you get your big main role? Um, obviously talking about EastEnders. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I told you, I was sort of, I've been acting professionally since the age of, uh, age of 10. Uh, so I'm 46 this year, so uh, yeah, 36 year overnight success. And I'm, <laughs> I've been at EastEnders 12 years now. So yeah, it's just a process of uh, every job in actor would know uh, what the process is. It's just a, you have an audition, you go for you know you go for uh, you go for an audition, and you sort of you know hope it goes well. It's a, you know for for all of that time really from the age of ten to I suppose. Um, however old was it, I, when I got the job, 34 or something, always just a job in actor. So, mm. um, yeah, it's just another audition. Mm. So, great. are you the kind of actor that you just go for it and just audition for a lot of stuff, or do you think that's the role I want? I don't think, I don't think yeah, you can't really be that picky. I think yeah. until you get to a certain level, you're not, you're not picking and choosing. I think even still some of the best, biggest actors in the world are still auditioning for stuff. You know, a lot of it is down to whether you're right for the role or whether you're going to fit in with the rest of the cast and all that yeah. stuff. So in my experience, it was always a process of auditioning. Mm. I think you have always auditioned for a job. I think I don't think I've ever been offered a job. I can't think of many actors that I know that have just been offered a job yeah. outright. Even but, times they just want to see that you've got a, you've got the right accent or that you look right. Or, mm. Do you know what I mean they want to meet you before the unless you're at a certain crazy Tom Cruise level? Then, sure. Then you risk, you know, whatever. But um, mm. yeah. Yeah, and um, so, but it wasn't like a role where you thought that's a role I've got to have. Um, it was another audition for a role that you might like. Well, obviously, EastEnders is part of, in my mind, sort of British life, and it? it's part of um, growing up. I watched it, and, and it's just a massive show, and it? it's like the mm. number one show in the UK. And and over the years, I've been an actor. I'd have friends that have gone through it. Um, so Perry Fennick, I've known for for many years. Um, Steve McFadden, I worked with him when I was, I think, like 17 or 18. Mm. One of my first ever jobs was a student gig. And Steve went to Rada and, and uh, uh, a good actor. So I'd worked with him. And then Barbara Windsor, I'd kind of known her. Mm. And, uh, and been out with these people when they were out and about. Like when you're just, you know, going out and... Uh, socialising and see, and then you sort of see the chaos and the mayhem that goes on around them and I'd been in that situation i had been through all of that so so it's a bit of a weird situation I, I guess for me the defining thing or the reason that kind of um, I decided to go down the East Enders Road was because my daughter was one years old at the time and uh, so we went through the process of all the uh, auditions. Then it looked like we might get it, and then they offered the job. It's on. The, they offered the job on a Friday. So so I said, I said, look, I can't give you a decision now. I want to talk about it with my wife, and I'll give you an answer on Monday. So basically, we spent everything talking the whole weekend about uh, about what we should do. Now, what they've done is offered a three-year contract. Um, so yeah, so it's a. So I can't say to you that it was a job that that I desperately no. wanted to do, or that, or that, um, or that it was in my dream job. Although I'm, I really appreciate the scale of it, and and what an amazing job it's turned out to be. Like 12 years later, I'm still there, and, and I love it. I love it there. It's, mm. it's incredible. And um, but at the time, there's I think there's a lot to take on board in terms of not only you and how it's going to affect your life. What how's your life day to day going to uh, uh, going to change? Also, how's it going to affect the people around me? And that's very important. So the conversations over that weekend were with Alison. You know, are you comfortable with it? I think if any point along that road, <coughs> excuse me, she had said no or she wasn't comfortable with it, then I don't think I would have gone down that road really. Mm. But what it was was that Amber, my daughter, was one years old. They'd offered a three-year contract, and in that job, to have that any kind of that stability for that long is very unusual. Mm. Um, so I was at a point where. Yeah, three years on EastEnders sounded all right, sounded good. Yeah, mm. you, you know, it was a stable, how did you feel stable when you, wage. When you found out, how did you feel? Yeah, nervous and, and uh, yeah, obviously you want to you want to do a good job, you know. But so much of that job is very different from anything else you're going to do because it's a soap and it's ongoing. A lot of the reaction to the actors or the characters is very immediate. You know, like the episodes we film now, they'll go out in six, seven, eight weeks. So... Um, so there's this kind of like symbiotic relationship between you, the actor, the character, and the, and the audience that you don't normally get on any 
you do a film, you do a film and two years later it might come out, mm. then you'll get a reaction. You know, theatre is different because you get the reaction there and then, but then it's gone, you know, it's done. But mm. on that, because it's, uh, because it's ongoing and because, um, because they take all that feedback very seriously, um, yeah, you just you want to come in and you want to do a good job, obviously, but then so much of the other stuff, whether the audience is going to take to the character and use the actor, is just totally out of your hands. So mm. um, <clears throat> I've seen it over the years where very good actors come in and sometimes the character doesn't quite work or they don't like the storyline or they don't, something's not right with that family and the audience, they just, they, they don't take them at all. Yeah. So, um, so having been offered a three year contract and going into it, and knowing the scale of it, and knowing the, the size of it, and the, the, the potential effect it will have on <clears throat> all aspects of your life, yeah, nervous, mm. nervous, but excited, mm. you know, but um, one of those where you have to really sort of focus in and, uh, you know, there's a lot to take on board there. Mm. There's a mentoring system there now, so which, which uh, I think was there when I, when, when I joined, but I think over the years they've realised that um, uh, with EastEnders or any big soap, I suppose you're taking on more than just the job. You know, you're taking everything else. Because when I walk out the studio or whatever, that, you, you know, to, to all intents and purposes, everyone, I'm still Max Brannan. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's, uh, yeah. so it's, you know, how you, what, you know, how does that, how's that going to affect you? Mm. Well, and so what they're guiding you through, basically living a normal life and being a big star in EastEnders. I think it sort of self-regulates itself. There's people that have been there a long time and have been and. Yeah, just you have to get comfortable with it. You have to find, and everyone's different, aren't they? Like you know, different individuals. <clears throat> so everyone's got their own little way of dealing with it. But anyone who's been there for any length of time can only have been there for that length of time if they've found a comfortable place with it. Because mm. if you're so uncomfortable, you just don't like it, or it's, it's not me. Those people don't tend to sort of stay there. So, mm. um, so there's a lot of people there that have that experience. Right, it's a common experience, but. There's not many people in the world have got that experience and can sort of give that yeah, advice. It's not a normal thing, is it? Yeah, it's not a normal thing. No. <laughs> and then people come into it, and you, and and uh, yeah, it's a lot to take on. Do you mm. know what I mean? Because not only the job and the pressure of the job, which in itself is is you're never going to work that hard as an actor, I don't think, in any other sphere. And I've done films and TV, other TV and theatre stuff like that. Each in their own way, they're quite demanding, but not on the scale of a, of a soap that goes out four times a week. Mm. I mean, literally, I don't know how they give you the script. They, you know, you get a pile of scripts every week. I don't know where this stuff comes from. Yeah. So I don't know how they do that four, you know, four episodes a week, a year, you know, week on week, year on year on year. It's just mm. incredible. So um, it's quite something, yeah. Mm. So you said before that you sat down with your wife. Um, because I, I just put, put myself in your shoes and I just thought, I know this is like really lame and just, but like if someone had offered me the job, like, yeah, right, done, yeah. son. I, I could I really go back for three mm -hmm. days and, and I, I really admire the fact that you took a lot of time to think about it. Uh, and then you said you talked about how it would change your life. How did you think it was going to change your life? And then has it been in reality different how it's changed your life? Um, yeah, I think the reason I had such a, a reason view on it was a what I said to you before. I'd known people that were in it and had been with them, so I'd experienced that. So I felt like I had an insight into what it could potentially be. Um, I think the best advice I ever had was from Barbara Windsor quite early on, and she said to me, "Don't change anything about what you do in your life," which you know, sounds quite simplistic, but I've kind of taken that and run with it. So I'm quite stubborn in the fact that, you know, if I'll just do any, you know, it doesn't stop me from doing anything, basically. And I think you just have to, you, um, every situation is slightly different. Um, it's very hard to be like, really um, objective about it, I suppose. I don't know, you know I, I think in some ways you'd have to ask that question to the people around me. Mm. Because uh, I'm sort of at the centre of it, so I, I don't maybe see some of it or... But I'll be in situations where my family went, I'll walk past and they'll hear that person go, oh, da, 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 da. it's so and so, or whatever. But yeah. I don't get that because then they're, they're trying to be discreet. Yeah. But everyone else gets it. So it's weird for them. So, which was always my concern right. <coughs> going into it. Yeah. But it's been fine, it's been great. Yeah. Um, so you, you, don't, you wouldn't really say there's been much negative that's come of it? I think uh, overall really positive yeah, in terms great. of in terms of family life in terms of uh, career maybe possibly I don't know you know beyond or whatever but certainly at the moment um, the work that I'm doing there is great I love the character that I'm playing mm. they always give me fantastic stuff to do right. 
I love working there. It's a real family. They've been, you know, a lot of the crew have been there since the beginning, 30, mm. 30 whatever years, five years. The sound guys, are, the camera guys. Yeah, it is a family. So mm. to be part of that is very special. It's not, there's not many places like that. And it's a joy, it's a joy to go to work. So. Yeah. Because we were just talking and um, I didn't realise how close you live. So in your house, it's like 3 a.m. in the morning. So I really yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. And I'm already getting up by now. Yeah. And you only live not too far away from the studio. So. Yeah, like literally 20 minutes. Which must make a huge difference. Yeah, well, they're long days. So, uh, so film shooting day normally starts at 7 a.m. Normally finished 7 a.m. Um, when I started, we were living in London, which was like an hour and a half away. So that, it's just over... A, course of a week or a month mm. I added all those hours up it's just too much it was 10 hours a week when I could be at an extra 10 hours a week with the kids or you know um, with, with the family when you're very busy on the show you just you're in full time and it's you know five days a week sometimes six they do a lot of Saturdays now mm. um, and it's and in terms of scripts that you learn and it's probably 30 pages a day something like that wow. how, do you, is, uh, how do you memorize all that it's what they pay for. I think. <laughs> so <laughs> I you sit in there hours and hours, or have you managed to get better at memorising? I think, again, anyone who's been there for any length of time has to be probably quite naturally quite good at it. I don't think you can survive if you weren't able to work at that kind of level. But again, in my experience, or uh, the, the people that can do that and do that for any length of time are quite, there are not many of them. So if you look at our show, you've got Adam Wood, yeah, Steve McFadden, um, you know, anyone anyone in that show who's been there for a few years has obviously got uh, the ability to do that. June Brown is probably, um, she's 91 now, I think, June. She wow. Just, she's got a photographic memory. So what, they just I'm, look at it and they could just... Yeah, I've never seen anyone it. learn a script as quickly. Yeah, I remember we, we were doing, we were shooting one day and they came up and said, we've, oh, sorry, June, we've, we, we forgot to give you this scene. We're doing this scene now, we're shooting this scene. It's five pages. So I stood there and she read the first page and she read the second and she read the th and, and she got to the end of the fifth page and she went, right, let's go. She needs to run a course yeah. on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd love to be able to read I've that. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. I was like, I couldn't believe it. She's got a literally photographic memory. Yeah. Now, June's been there 20, 25 years and she's still sharp as a, as a button so, um, mm. or a pin or whatever the expression is. But um, So yeah, so in my experience, the people that are there can work at, at that level. So do, to put do you think because they've been doing it for such a long time, do you think? No, not necessarily. I think you just have to, you know, you have to fall into it. I think mm. it's a muscle. It is a muscle. If I, if I have a little bit of time off, then I go back. I, th I do struggle. I think you do struggle a bit. But when you're up and running and you're in that, in that rhythm, in that, in of just doing it, learning, getting rid of it, learning, getting rid of it, you just then you can just hoover it up. Mm. So it just becomes that thing that you do. But that's why it becomes so tiring because it's, uh, you know, f mentally that's very tiring. It's like you're cramming for exams the whole time. Yeah. It's the only way I can sort of describe it. And also, not only doing that, but you're learning stuff and getting rid of it very quickly. Like literally, I can do a, shoot a scene in the morning. By the afternoon, I'll ca I can't remember what the lines were for that because almost my brain is clearing that for the next stuff. Right. So, so it's like a, you're just doing that constantly. Mm. And then sort of, yeah, in my experience, again, you can do that probably for about three months quite full on, yeah. and after that you just, your head's just not, you're gone, totally mm. gone. So you, you learn to adapt, and I think they are very good um, at EastEnders at recognising that. So what they do is they, is the characters have very busy periods, or they build, build up, so you, when you're very busy in the storyline, and the build up might be uh, a couple of months, and then, and then the, that storyline will come to a head or explode. And that whole process will be probably three months when you're very, very busy. And then, and then I think they're very good at recognising now that when they put an actor through that, at the end of that, they need to give them a sort go of to, Go to rehab. Yeah, yeah. No, you, just, you need a little bit of time where you're just going in the cafe and having a bacon sandwich yeah. and, do you know what I mean, in the background. Um, yeah, depends good. what you do on that show, but Max always seems to drive the story. He's always involved in crazy storylines. So, um, mm. so, yeah, but it's good. Yeah, they look after the actors, which is yeah. great. I suppose they've been doing it so long, they just build that experience, don't they? Of I think so, yeah. I think, mm. I think historically what used to happen is they never used to give actors those, those kind of quieter periods. And then I think what would happen is people would burn out and say, that's it, I've had enough, I can't. Yeah. You literally, I can't. You, I don't think you can work under that workload for, yeah, in my experience, it's probably about three months. And mm. then you just, you feel like your just head's going to explode. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's all of those things. Interesting. Mm -hmm. like to put it in perspective, like if you do a film, they might do half a page a day, page a day, maybe wow. two pages at most, something like that. Um, and EastEnders, because it's multi-cam, there's three or four cameras, they can just shoot. If you, and, that's, and 
another exciting thing about it for me is like it's very it's almost like theatre. So if you're doing a seven page scene, you'll do it in one go and the cameras are just running. Yeah. A little bit like Nana just keep keep running. So you'll do it in one you'll do it in one hit, mm. which is great. Because I think it's just for uh, for an actor it just frees you up. So so I think some of the performances are really are really exciting and live because it, <clears throat> because if you've done your homework and you know your lines by the time you get on there, mm. you can just you can just let it roll and, and they'll whatever happens they'll catch. You know, mm. the cameras will catch. So in that sense, it's very exciting to work there. People are like, I can go there every day and, and sort of like churn it out. But in my experience, every day is so different and varied and, and you're always getting that, you know, if, if acting is what you love to do, which is, you know, which is what I love to do, I love the whole process of it, then it's just an exciting place because mm -hmm. you're just given that freedom. Right, we've got a 10 page scene now where you have a massive round, we're just going to smash it out, we're going to do it in one thing, mm -hmm. which in some ways is very intimidating for, but other people just thrive under that pressure. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's very, like, exciting. Mm. There's not much hanging about. No, sure. Yeah, so it's good. Yeah. And um, how much of what you do is sort of planned? So I'll give you an example on the way down in the car. The way I like to do my interviews is I like to do some research, but I don't like to overdo it. I don't, mm -hmm. want, to, I don't want to ask you questions you've been asked a million times before. So if I do ask one, just tell me. No, sure. but, you know. <laughs> um, and so there's a part of me that wants to plan what I'm doing. Yeah. And there's a part that wants to just let the interview and the journey go. Mm -hmm. Are you like really scripted or have you got a little bit of, you know, are you going in the scene knowing everything you're doing, every phrase, every expression, or, or are you sort of trying to interact with the people in the scene and there's a little bit more of the moment as well? It's a combination of all those things. Right. So... And forgive my ignorance, by the way. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. So they're all good questions, yeah, because probably... I don't think many of my no. listeners are actors. No, yeah, so yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's, uh, yeah, it's a... Yeah, it's a fascinating process, isn't it? So, but partly... Well, first of all, you've got the script, so you've got to be pretty accurate on that because, you're, because my lines are feeding your lines. Mm. So you've learned your script with your cue lines. Now, if I don't give you your cue line, you're standing there going, yeah. 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 where's that fucking line? You, know what I mean? like, you need your line. So, um, yeah. so it's not as free form as you might like. No. That's probably one of the pressures of being there. Of course. Uh, you've got to be switched on. You can make it your own in some senses. Yeah. And, then, and then everyone's different in terms of how they work or, or you know, there's different directors there. One, each director will do one week. So each director will do four episodes. Di some directors like to block it out before they'll say to you you stand there you stand there on that line you come over you pick up the glass then you move over on that line and that's it boom we'll do it like that you know um personally i like to sort of block it out again there's not much time in there so you have to kind of be prepared before you go on so personally i like to can we just try it you know what i mean just walk it through i might not do that you know so i might not want to move on that line i might want to stay over there i want i might want a bit of distance with that camera i might not want to get too close to them it just depends what's going on in this scene but it's just a different feel to it isn't it every act is slightly different mm. and then and then so that's all the technical stuff so the words are quite technical the moves are pretty technical because the cameras have got to know mm. roughly what you're going to do and then within that Everyone's different in terms of how they work, but personally, yeah, I would like to, for me, I would say probably every take is slightly different. Depends what, the way I, I would tend to work is, um, how long have you got? I don't know, yeah, so it's, uh, it, it's just I every... Know, I've got, I'm in your house, <laughs> so I've got until you kick me out, so. Um, yeah, so, so, well, I grew up doing, uh, I went up to, I'll go back to the beginning. When mm. I was 10 years old, I went to a place called Anna Shears, um, um, uh, which was in Islington. So a lot of actors had come through Anna Shears. She's an amazing teacher. She's still teaching now. Now, all of her stuff was like improvisation. So it's all, uh, which is great when you're a kid because um, you just feel like you're, you're going in this event. You know what I mean? So you've had a bad day at school or something. You just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and all her stuff was very, you know, she just wanted the kids to express themselves, which is great. And then I ended up getting uh, TV and film work and, 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 ha and more or less working steadily all the way through. And when I got to about 30, what I realised was uh, I didn't really have much technique. I like, didn't really, if a scene required me to cry or to get upset or something like that, you could get yourself into that place. But it was very haphazard, do you know what I mean? It was very, uh, uh, you know, I didn't, have, I didn't have a technique where I could go back to to something that I could more or less rely on. Now I think, like the kids at Anish is, if you were naturally talented at it, you would get work and you'd go, you know, and, and, and as happened, I sort of had a, a, a career over that time and was, and was doing in, some really interesting work, good stuff. But I felt like 
yeah, there was no, you know, what I did, what I just got there on kind of what I was doing naturally, but I, I had no kind of base to it. So what I did, I went back and trained, and then, and, the, and then, so every act is different in terms of what techniques there are out there and stuff like that. And that's what the point where you have to look around, isn't it? Because there are so many different ways of working. Um, you have to pick one that kind of works for you. So, so I'm, uh, I met a guy called Scott Williams, and he, and he basically works under a technique called Meisner which is uh, roughly based on a um, little bit method, but it's a little bit different. There are a lot of different, ex it's a weird thing anyway, it's a lot of it's based on uh, repetition exercises and all that, but a lot, so I did that for two years, which was great. So I kind of went back and retrained and refocused and thought, you know, I got to this point where I thought, I'm not even sure if I want to do this job. It's kind of the thing that I've just been doing because I've had a kind of natural talent for it when I was young, you, you know, that was, it just happened very naturally. I kind of fell into it. And when I got to 30, I was like, I'm not sure, A, that, you know, how I'm doing it. I'm not really sure how this job works or what I'm doing. And, uh, and I'm not sure if I want to do it. So I trained two years with Scott Williams. And I, I think that just refocused me, basically, in terms, of, in terms of what I was doing. That I came out of working with him. Yes, I, now suddenly I had a technique or something, like something tangible that I could do, something that I could do to work. And also, yeah, that, I, that actually I loved what I did and, and, and the process of learning about what I did and my craft, I suppose, is what you call it, mm. was, was endlessly fascinating. I discovered that thing, yeah, I love this, you know what I mean? How can I better this? How can I push that? How can I, how can I improve myself in that? Do you know what I mean? So all, so all of that really excited me. Mm. Um, but to go back to your point in terms of how freeform it is, but then you've got the script, you've got your moves, but then Meisner, allows you to be in the moment. That's the whole yeah. thing of Meisner, is to be in the moment, is to be in, 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 in the moment. And then what I do is, 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 is I'm reacting to you. Mm. So I'm focused on you and what you're doing, and what you're doing is gonna affect what I'm doing. Mm. You shout at me, I might shout at you, or I might get upset. Depends how it feels in that moment. Mm. So that's how I kind of work. Yeah. And so, so, it's, so it's a little bit random. So I don't yeah. really plan, I can't plan anything out. And some actors are, are very different. So so some actors would want to plan it out. They'd say, I'm going to do this there or do that there. I said, I don't get it. I don't give a fuck what you do. Whatever you do, I'm going to react to it. Yeah. Don't, don't affect me because I'm working in, a, in, in that way. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, it is, what, it is what it is. But, you know, that works for me. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it sounds like there's quite a lot of analogies with general life because I guess most people, when they're thinking about acting, like I'm, take someone like me who's you know pretty ignorant of it, love watching films and you know love great actors, but yeah. not trained, and you assume what you're doing, but all you've just said is being present and reacting to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean that might be really well known in the acting world, but in most most of us in life, aren't we? We're living in our own head all the time, thinking about what we're doing all the time. Yeah, but you're always being reacting to everyone other people around you, mm. aren't you? But you just do it naturally. Yeah. I mean, you're not thinking about it. But suddenly you put a camera on it and a script and yeah. lights and yeah. all that. Suddenly... I just got scared thinking about yeah. that. Yeah. So you're thinking about you. Oh, shit. Yeah. But actually what you should be doing is still, still being in the moment with them mm. and reacting with them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it is interesting. Mm. It goes back to the whole thing about what is acting, isn't it? And that was another... You know, what is, what is it? What is it? What is acting? You know, it's a, it's a, I'm fascinated by it. I, I what, love the process. What, what do you think it is? It is. I'll tell you what it is, and it's it's a Meisner thing, or it's a Scott Williams thing. The kind of thing is acting naturally in a completely unnatural environment. Right. You know what I mean, mm. consciously unnatural, because that's your job, isn't it? You're there to um, to to. That's your job, but your your job is to be natural in that environment, mm. like a theatre or something. You know, what I mean? your your job is to be as real as possible, but you all know it's an, it's an artifice, isn't it? Mm. You're stood on stage in front of a paying audience. And everyone, you know, if you break it down, it's slightly ridiculous, but everyone, 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 you're there, everyone's there to, 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 to go with it, aren't you, sort of thing. Mm. And that's, that's, I suppose that's, uh, yeah, good acting for me is, yeah, someone who's just acting natural, mm. but then, you know, yeah. Is there any, are there any actors you think, amazing, just, Brilliant. Oh, there are loads. Those yeah. Are great and, and you want a name? Um, I wouldn't say anyone specific. I would say like performances, probably. Yeah. Oh, so you can have a, a performance rather than an actor. So you could have an actor you don't normally... I'll give you an example. I thought Tom Hanks is... He did this film. It was like with pirates who came and... Um, 
overtook a ship and oh, at yeah, the Captain end Mo- that's yeah, it yeah, that yeah. end scene I just, I've never been a big Tom Hanks guy yeah but that end scene I just thought whoa he just had me I've so, seen the film but I've never seen the end right it's one of those films with a shaky camera, isn't it? Yeah. And my wife got seasick. Yeah. To leave. Well, that, that end scene. Is it a good scene? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was good up to that point. Yeah, but yeah. I'd not really thought of it like that. <laughs> You're teaching me a lot just interviewing. So, like, you can have a good actor and you can have a bad film. You can have an actor. You think, okay, but then they do this amazing scene. So yeah, it- and it depends what story and uh, what the character is and, with, and all that. It's hard for me to watch a film and switch off, to be fair. Well, because like, you always think in, in actor well, mode? Well, not always, but uh, yeah, I know how it works. So it's, it's, it's very rare that I would like watch a film and... It's a bit like a prostitute having sex. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's the same thing at all. But, uh... I can't even just say it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's, it's hard for me to like switch off. Do you mm. know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's my job. And if someone does something that I really like, I'm like, fine. You know, you, you know almost like, you know, that's your work, isn't it? Mm. So you know, how do you do that? What's, what's going on with that? Mm. Or... Um, so it's, yeah, it's hard. Mm. Do you keep working on your craft? Do you keep learning? Do you think it's important to keep sharpening your tools? Or have you got to a stage in your career where you kind of feel like, you know, you've got good momentum and you just do your thing? I think there's always room to learn. I'm always trying to improve. Mm. I think every day, every day I go in, I want to be better than I was yesterday or, or, or there's always stuff to improve on. I think always, yeah. Mm. I, think if, uh, yeah I think if you didn't have that sense of uh, wanting to learn and wanting to push yourself forward, I don't know. There doesn't seem much point of going in to, to work apart from the money. You mm. know, it's like, um, yeah, yeah, I think that's got to be a driving factor for yeah. me. It is anyway, because I re- I love what I do in terms of uh, in terms of the, the craft, of, like the process of it. It's really interesting to me because it's about people, really. If you're an actor, you've got to be interested in people and what makes them tick. Because you're playing other people, so put yourself in, it, in that situation or get a character in that situation. I have to understand, you know, you have to understand maybe why does that person act in that way that would be different from how I act? Why is he doing that? So it's, uh, so yeah, it's good. It's a really good job. It's, mm. really, it's interesting. Mm. And are there any particular things you do to develop your craft and learn? I mean, obviously you talked about going back to um, acting classes or is it literally just you're always watching? Um, uh, I suppose part of what I do is, um, I think the beautiful thing about Meisner, the technique Meisner, is the only limit to how far uh, you can go with it is how far you, what, is how far you want to go within yourself, if that makes sense. Mm. A lot of it is getting yourself into an emotional state to be ready for a scene or something like that. Yeah. Um, now how you get to that emotional state, uh, is you take a, a journey of fantasy or you think of something in your life that's sad or something like that. You know, it's up to you how far do you want to go. Mm. Uh, you know, you know, it, it's a really interesting job. Like if, if, uh, if when I went back and retrained, if, we're, if ever you were dragging this stuff up to, in order to get emotional, uh, it would always be, this is, because this is good for your job. You're not, you know, you're not here to sort your problems out. If you've got issues and, uh, and uh, painful stuff, go and see someone about it, go yeah. and sort it out. You're <laughs> not, that's not what we're doing, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But there's, but there's almost an element of acting where you bring up this stuff in and order to... And does that bring up any of your problems, bringing up all your baggage? It depends who you are, isn't it? Depends, because yeah. you know, actors are just people, isn't it? So the, you know, yeah, of course, yeah. But in mm. that sense as well, you, you don't have to go that far, do you? That's, that's, mm. the, that's the other beautiful thing. But then in terms of your work or your craft, it probably betters you to, to, to drag up that stuff. Yeah. So, um, so that's what's fascinating. And that can, you can, that is just, that's just you getting into yourself in it and knowing yourself enough to say, right now, this is what the scene requires in an emotional sense, because the emotion is always under there. You've got the words floating on top. We've always got that emotional drive, if you like. Mm. So that's the that's the that's the uh, that's the challenge, and that's the that's the thing you can always work on. Because mm. you can always you can there's always you can always go further, or you can always be more truthful, or you can always you know how much you want to lie to yourself that oh that's not really you know well, you know whatever. Just you have to be really brave, you know what I mean? Mm. Because a lot of time you're exposing yourself, you're exposing uh, your emotions and all that. So you know, I just I admire actors. I just think they're they're like brave people. Mm. 
you know, to, to do that. But at the same time, you're not there to sort your problems out. You know, you do, you're doing that because, because it's good for your work. Yeah. You know I mean, so, it's a, so for me, it's a very, it's a very definite line mm. where all that stuff is and where my life is away right. from that, you know what yeah. I mean, or, or on the other side of that. It's no, there's no, for me, there's no crossover, I'm very really clear. But I think it is a job where those, those lines can sometimes get blurred. Mm. I think it is, can get complicated. Actors are, in my experience, comp quite really interesting, but generally quite complicated. Mm. You know. Did you see that documentary? Um, and I forget the f specific name, Harry, you might remember, but it was about um, Andy Kaufman and Jim Carrey played him. I didn't see it, but I know right. about Andy yeah, Kaufman. Well, he was I like, love literally it, yeah. in character for like a year. Just fully, all day, all night in oh, he character. Was like Jim Carrey was. Jim Carrey yeah, was yeah, in yeah. character the whole year, causing absolute carnage everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's different ways of working. It was yeah. different. I know Daniel Day-Lewis is like that. Mm. They carry him about, then they went in my left foot and all that. They carry yeah. him, he wouldn't walk anywhere, would he? And when mm. he has his lunch, they had to all carry him and all that. You know, that's that thing about, you know, how far do you want to go yeah. in order to... Well, some of them, I think, they go so far. I think Christian Bale's quite famous for going quite pretty far in, in his life, and it makes it difficult to live a, yeah. your but personal again, life. That's a different way of working for me. That's more like, uh, more, a bit more method acting, a bit more sort of... Um, that's a bit more down the route of, uh, in order to play a murderer, you have to know what it's like to have murdered someone or something, you know what I mean? I, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. I'm, okay. I'm, not, I'm not like fully wedded into that, yeah. um, into, into that method acting thing, mm. which I think done well is great, but I think there's, I think there's real dangers going down that road. Because, like. because well, it just, it just takes away the element of, right, you can, you can imagine those things. You know, I think the mind's quite powerful in terms of, of, of situations you can put yourself into or where you can go there, you know, to, I think to limit yourself, like, you know, if you're playing my left foot, someone with a disability, that you have to be disabled all the time to, to know what that's like. I don't know, yeah, it's just, but you can't deny the fantastic performances. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, I think that's the point as well, that everyone's process is different in my job and, and, and there's no definitive right or wrong, but if it works for that person, that's it, that's good. Mm. You know, but I think the best actors take different things from different, um, different, different ways of working. Um, and, and, and in my experience, that's, that's kind of what I do. I don't, I'm not exclusively what Meisner and, and, and stuff like that, but you, know, you just have to, you have to do what works for you because mm. it is such a complicated job. Yeah. And was it like you started early at ten? I mean, I know obviously a lot, a lot of actors do start young as well. Was it something you just glided into, or it was like I'm going to do this? This is what I want to do. Uh, I done a little bit of primary school, then I went to Anna Shears. I was there for not long, a few months, and then what used to happen was um, people that wanted kids for TV dramas and stuff uh, used to go to Anna Shears, and I uh, got my first job. Excuse me, a thing called the Gentle Touch, um, police drama. I think I was on there for like two weeks, three weeks, excuse me, and, and I guess that experience changed my life, or, the, or certainly the course of my life, because um, yeah, after that I was absolutely decided that, that I wanted to be an actor, yeah, mm. after that experience. Yeah, it changed the course of my life, so mm. um, yeah, yeah, it was really, yeah, strange. So I remember you were very clear, very young. Absolutely, right, yeah. 100%. And I think the thing that really done it for me was uh, after that came to an end, the filming came to an end, I was having a chat with my mum about it in the kitchen. And she said, how was it, blah, blah, blah. I said, yeah, I, said, um, I really think I want to be an actor. She didn't pause, she didn't blink or anything like that. She just looked at me and she went, well, you are one. You know, that sort of, uh, you know, my mum's great, like, like yeah. there's, there's no limits. Yeah, you know what that's I mean? great. No, and then just that moment as well, just for me, it's just like, ingrained in my, my brain it was like yeah yeah I am one so you know basically I mean? you never really were give, given a chance to doubt that you couldn't yeah you want to be Which one you are one gift, that's it. It? yeah you know, that's it you are, you are one you, know, mm. you don't have to think about if you want to be one it's not something to I don't know it's just yeah. in that in that one little moment it was just a whole world of of you know sub, I, was, I guess looking back support um you know, everything, isn't it? It's everything. Yeah. Just go and do it then, you know. Mm. Well, not only that, but you are doing it. Yeah. You know, you saying that, that, that just, I just think, what beautiful parenting that is, and that just makes me want to yeah, be like yeah. that with my kids. 
funny though, isn't it? But if I spoke to my mum now, she might not even remember that moment. So I suppose you can't pick and choose the moments that are going <laughs> to no. stick, stick with her. <laughs> you probably remember some other sheep things. She doesn't want you to remember. <laughs> yeah. But just into, yeah. But yeah, amazing. Mm. Yeah. Is there, um, well, I, is there? I'm sure there is a side of acting where it's not what we see on the camera. So is there the business side, the promotion side? You know, you have to do a lot of interviews, TV. Is there the business side of TV? Yeah, yeah, you know, um, especially on a, on a show like EastEnders, of course, that's a, um, you know, in British institution, there are a certain amount of com um, commitments that you make to promote the show and to... Um, and that's contractual, is it? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Yeah, in terms of like conducting your, your life away from it, it's, yeah. it's got to be, you know, you're, you're, while you're contracted them, you're a represent, representative of the show. Mm. I think that's right. I think, yeah. it's, you know, I think that's, people would look at that differently and think that's another pressure, but um, yes, yeah, it's, it's the business you're in. You know, mm. it's like, um, yeah, of course, you know, they, they're, they're very much protecting what they, you know, the show and all that. And I think that's right. I think you as an you as a employee, of well, theirs, you're, you're, you're there to represent them as well. So, um, so yeah, there comes um, responsibility with that, but that's fine, you know, it's great. I fully accept that and, yeah. and, uh, and uh, I'm fully on board with that. Do you yeah. like that side of it? Yeah, I like being part of a team. Yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, usually in, in acting, and, and if you have a good career, it's always contract work. So a contract starts and ends. The film would usually be probably, you know, it might be six months, three months, six months. Usually you don't know what you're doing um, straight afterwards. And, and they're great experiences, and, and as I say, you're hardly ever home, you know, you might do, f I've done films in uh, Poland and Czech Republic and, uh, and stuff everywhere, you know, and you're just moving around the country, a lot of stuff that's made in Manchester now and stuff like that. But those things sort of, uh, you know, that's a family for a very short while, and, mm. then it sort of, and then it moves on. It's very kind of, it's very hard to make sort of proper, in my experience, kind of, um, friendships with people or think because everyone's it's so sort of transient it's like a traveling circus for a bit yeah and they're very close very intense friendships or um, working relationships and then boom it's gone mm. um and it's so so what i like that i've got at eastenders is a is a you know it's a as much in my industry it's and it's very unusual but as permanent as you're going to get mm. um that's great i like it yeah and you've been doing really it like is it 12 years now? 12 years yeah yeah, yeah so that's a did you ever think when you got your first deal you'd be doing it for 12 years? No, not at all. And, it's, and that has gone so quick. 12 years is, is absolutely flown. So yeah. my daughter was one when we started. She's 13 now. My little boy wasn't even born. He's 10. So, um, so they've grown up in that time. Mm. But it's gone so quick. And I get, I said, it must only be a really good sign that, yeah, um, that, yeah I just I still really enjoy the job. So, yeah, I wouldn't be there if I didn't enjoy it. Mm. Um, Do you ever you, think about your career beyond... Yeah, I think it's always um, a consideration and it was a big consideration at the very beginning because I know in real terms it's going to cut you off from a, from a lot of work. But until I, until I really make the decision to go and draw that line, then I'm never really going to know anyway. Mm. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not because I've had uh, a long time acting before, I, I guess, I joined EastEnders and, I'm, uh, and I think that gave me a great... Um, appreciation of what the alternative is. I think sometimes some of the younger actors join EastEnders and they get a sense of they want to be out there doing something else or you feel maybe they feel a little bit tied in and, they, and, and there's always a sense that they're being pulled by something else that's, that's out there. Now I know what's out there. I've had, before I joined EastEnders, I've had 24 years of, of, of that life. Of, and it's great, it's great when you're young and you're traveling the world, you're meeting amazing people and, and all that stuff, but for me, family is really important, and so what EastEnders has given me is a, is a stable family life, and uh, I'll be like forever grateful to them for that because mm. in this job, in this industry, it's, it's quite rare. Mm. And when you say cut off, and you say other people wanting to sort of move away, um, and by the way, if I get this read wrong, just tell me. But you know, you just answer mm -hmm. what it is. Do you mean because you get pigeonholed into a, a specific role that makes it hard later, or just? Oh, you the, mean what beyond? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think because like you're going to be known for what you've of course, done. Of course, yeah. I think twelve years on a show like that, um, yeah, it's going to cut me off from an awful lot of work after. Um, you know, maybe that's another reason you've been there for so long. You know, it's like, you know, you know, as I say, it's a, it's given me a very stable home life, mm. and and hopefully, if 
you know, at the moment I'm very happy there, I don't want to go anywhere, then that yeah. will continue. And I've got, you know, I work incredibly hard there to, to, to make sure that, you know, that I'm always working there, that I'm always driving there, always, you know, I've never taken my foot off the pedal in that sense. Mm. I remember a conversation with Steve McFadden very early on, and, and, and all these things to adapt to when you're on a long running show like that, but after about six months, I think we'd had a storyline of that had come to a peak, and then, and then on a the Monday morning, we we're in the cafe ordering a bacon sandwich, and it's like suddenly this thing of like, bloody, this thing bloody don't stop, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, you know, no, because my experience before that was like, the thing of contract work, everyone does it like you do a film or a TV, a lot of TV series, and there's always an end. Mm. And, 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 the, and you know, you get to the last, mm. yeah, great, <laughs> yeah. and you have a big party and all that, hey, brilliant, you were mm. great, and all that. None of that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Just like a recurring dream. Now yeah. you're back in on Monday yeah. at seven o'clock, you're like, what? You know, there's no, there's no one there. <laughs> yeah. There's no, yeah, there's no, no standing woo, in the Well done, you know what I mean? Oh, we're having a screening, we're going to have yeah. a party. None of that, mate, you know what I yeah. mean? Come and do your line. So mm. I was like, wow. That's, yeah. So that kind of sunk in after six six months, I think it was. Like, what? Wow, this is pretty crazy. So, um, so Steve, I know from before, anyway. So I said, I said to Steve, what's the. He'd been there for years, anyway. And I mm. said, what's the trick to this? What's the. You know, how do you, what's your approach? How do you approach it being here? And he said, I came here, and whatever that was, you know, he said, I came here. 140 in years ten, ago. <laughs> <laughs> came here 10 years ago. He said, as soon as I arrive, I put my foot on the pedal, down as hard as it would go. And he said, I've, and I've never taken it off. Right. And fuck it, no. Yeah. But that really sunk in for me. I was like, no, that's the way to do it. You mm. know what I mean? Cheers, Steve. Thank yeah. you, mate. <laughs> yeah. so, um, so I don't know if that approach is the same in other areas of life, but I think, it, you know, in certain, certain, certain things you have to, when you're in, you're fully in. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If you're going to yeah. do this, you're going to do it. And, not bloody moan about it or whatever. That's, that's a job. That's what you pay for. Mm. So that's my approach. I've always and I've taken. I really took that on board. Yeah. I'm like right, that's it. I'm in. I'm in. And I, and I think if you do that, then you get the you get the reward reward back, mm. which is twelve years. You know, twelve years later, I'm loving it and yeah. and, uh, and they give me great stuff to do. So I'm really yeah. happy. Yeah. So we had a good chat before, and I'll, we'll edit out the Arsenal bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> and edit in the Liverpool Mo Salah. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. Um, uh, and you were talking about uh, balance and family life is really important to you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I have a lot of entrepreneurs that I know and that follow me. And sometimes when you're an entrepreneur, it's like you're always working and you're never switching off. And it can be a curse because mm -hmm. it's like you're driving your passion that you have inside of you as an artist, a creative, a, an entrepreneur makes you great at what you do, like yeah. you in your job. And then also it can absolutely ruin the rest of your life. Yeah. And I really get a sense what you've built here in your house and just how us talking that you've, you've got that balance. You, I know it's not perfect because we were both saying, mm -hmm. where's the book? You know, yeah, yeah. no one's put, but you've got it. I think you've got it good. Mm -hmm. So how have you managed to build that good balance where you see your kids, you spend time with your kids, you've got your relationship and you've got an intense career? I think it's always a struggle. I think even e, I think I think you have to work incredibly hard at it. I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it happens overnight. I think you have to be very clear about what it is you want, like what you know, what are you working for, <laughs> what are you spending all these hours working mm. for. And for me, if it's not to enjoy the time with the kids and to see them grow up, I don't know what I'm bloody working for. Mm. What I'm spending what time for so. Um, it's hard. I think sometimes with guys that are very driven as well, like they, they're, they're always looking forward, aren't they? And I think sometimes you don't, yeah. you don't see what's actually there in front of you. Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes, um, I think sometimes that happens. Certainly guys, some of the guys that I know, the dads at the school, very hard working, and, but they never see their kids. No. Um, You're saying the city guys who are up at 5 a.m. Yeah, like, weekends are out playing golf and all yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I, personally, I don't understand it. You know, yeah. everyone's different in terms of, in terms of all that, um, I took a year off, like a, uh, like a year ago. I'd done 10 years at EastEnders and, and, and hadn't had a really proper break. And basically went to them and said, look, I'm knackered. I, I, want, I want a break. I'm very happy here. I want, I want to come back. So they, they worked me a, a, a year break uh, and a contract. That at, sounds at, like quite a rare it. thing. Yeah, they just ne they never do that for I don't think they've ever done that for anyone. So yeah, just really honoured that they've done mm. that. I think it's quite an unusual situation to be in. Uh, and for me, that year was just to be with the kids, to do all the school runs. Yeah, it was just that to stop and sort of take stock, really. Yeah. Be at home and get bored and um, get under my wife's feet, mainly. 
Did you uh, succeed at both of those? Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nailed it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it just, it really, it was like, you know, it's like pressing the pause button for a bit and, and having a look about, you know, st stop chasing everything all the time. You know, wh where are you chasing after a bit more mm. money and this, that, and, yeah. and thing, you know, much. Um, yeah, it was like pressing and pause. It was, it was amazing because it recharged me. It sort of uh, fully made me appreciate what I have. It made me uh, appreciate that I love what I do and I wanted to go back. I was by the end of it. I think it's thirteen months. I was, um, yeah, well up for going back. Mm. So, so all those things are really positive, aren't they? Because by the end of it, it was like, and I had a great year with the kids. You know, and they're, they're at an age where they'll remember dad being at home and you know getting in the way mm. or whatever. And uh, yeah, I think it's quite. That's uh, it is unusual, as you say, yeah, to, yeah. to take stock like that. But you definitely. But that's one of the beautiful things I think that this job has enabled me to do as well. So I only look at that as a, as a, as a in terms of being there. At East End. That's like you don't get that anywhere else. So it's uh, so yeah. I'm not. Um, I'm always I'm always appreciative of that. I'm always grateful for that. Mm. What an unusual and privileged position to be in. You know what I mean? It's. Uh, I feel very lucky. Mm. Yeah, and it's interesting as well. When I took that year off, a lot of the dads, because I was doing all the school runs and all that, and a lot of the dads were very curious about what I was doing. What are you, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm having a year off. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I want to, I want to, I want to, you know, see the kids and mm. spend a bit of time at home. And uh, yeah, so so as a result of that, I ended up having these conversations about, you know, immediately they would they would think about their own situation and, and explain to me about what they were doing and how they were trying to work it out. And literally by the end of that year. I, and it was quite a reassuring thing. I've I had realised that no one's got the perfect answer. Yeah. You know, everyone's everyone's trying their best to do what they think is right. Everyone, it seems to me, beats themselves up about certain elements of uh, work, life, kids, and all that. Everyone uh, is questioning whether what they're doing is right. Mm. Um, yeah. They think everyone else has got it made. They don't. In some see ways, the yeah. Downsides. I think in some ways I had thought that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I I wasn't having these conversations, but because of because I was taking that break, because it is pretty unusual. You did like a case study survey for a year, basically. Yeah, look, well, I was getting all these guys yeah. coming up and picking my brains about it. It was almost yeah. like they were like, "What are you doing?" You yeah, know I mean, they were like yeah. trying to figure it out, but only figure it out in terms of, of their own things. Yeah. And then and the conversation with guys were like, "Yeah, shit, well, you know, maybe I should do a bit more of that." And then they all went back to work. I, I don't know. I don't know whether they, you know, but again, whether whether people are in that position that you're able to do that. Some people would like to do it and they can't do it. And I think, um, you know, we've got friends that work all the time, and they ha but they have to, yeah. and that's fine, man. You know what I mean? It's like... Mm. Yeah, but you, you could know. argue that it was quite an unprecedented thing for you to do it. So you could argue that part of your brain could have said, oh, I can't really go into them and say, look, I want a year off. How's that going to happen? But you did. Yeah, you know, I'm also... Um, I suppose for me as well, I was always, I'm always got one, you know, I think sometimes it's good to have a break from a character as well. So I'm aware of that as well. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's very, in, in terms of the storylines that have been played out a lot over the last year and a half, it's been a very positive thing because I think it gives them another option to do something else with that character. Mm. So literally when I went up and said, I'm knackered, I want a break, they went, great, we'll put you in prison. Oh, that sounds good, you know. Yeah. So, 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 oh, Max went in prison for, he wrongly accused of a murder that he went in prison for. So straight away they've got, you know, they're going to work it out, they're going to yeah. work a story around it. So that's great for them because it gives them other options. Um, yeah, that was always in my mind and always that I wanted to go back. I never, I never wanted to leave. I just mm. wanted that, that bit of space where I love this job and I love being here, but I literally need a break. I'm naked. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was a bit of a weird situation. Then I was in the situation where I had that break and I was like, do I want to do other stuff? Do I want to work? So like the first three months, I was like, yeah, you know, you're still in that work mode, aren't you? I was like, yeah, maybe I should be doing this. And, and because essentially I'm self-employed, like a lot of entrepreneurs or whatever, because you're looking after yourself, you're always, you're always on the hustle, aren't you? Always, mm. You know what I mean? You're, always, you're in that mindset. So the first three months, I was like, right, I should be doing this. You know, my agent should be doing this. There's a, and after about three months, I was like, what the, f you know, what the fuck are we doing? You're having a year yeah. off, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Switch your brain off, man. Shit. So, mm. so I think after that period of time, when I realised, hang on a minute, you know what I mean? Shit, I'm just having a break here. Yeah. And there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> yeah. Actually, life's pretty all right. It's great. Mm. You know, your kid's healthy, you're all healthy, and it's, kids are doing well, and, and mm. you've got this time with them now, and, and you're going back to work. You've got a contract to go work, to back to work. As soon as that's sunk in, Oh, wow, I'm just going to enjoy it. Yeah. That's what happened.
And it was amazing, yeah, it's a great thing. I think more guys should do it, get women, guys, whoever. I think, it would be, you know, it's just, uh, I don't know. But then, yeah, not many people are in that position. So no. it's, uh, A, you've got to be able to do it financially, and then B, you're going to want to want to do it. Mm. But I would recommend it. Yeah. Something you said, well, I just sort of really hit me, really, is uh, don't always have to be chasing. Because life can just be one big chase, can't it? Yeah. For everything, the bigger house, the bigger the car, more money, more status, more followers, more fans, more likes, more subscribers, yeah, yeah. more whatevers, and then you're 85. But those are things to admire as well, aren't they? Yeah, like, it's a uh, paradox. Yeah, I don't think, you know, I think you have to have drive, don't you? Especially in my industry. And because you're self-employed as well, you know, everyone's fighting to get to get over everyone else or, you know, there's, my, my industry is very crowded and, mm. you know, I mean, you have to, you have to have that single-minded thing. So that's no bad thing. Yeah. I, you know, I admire that. And, you know, a lot of my friends are, I like people that are driven and, do you know what I mean, that are, that are successful and, yeah. and all of that stuff. So, yeah, I understand, I totally understand the, the trap of that because, yeah, all of a sudden you look back and, you, yeah, you, as you say, you're 85. Mm. You know, that's the thing, isn't it? That's the danger. Mm. Because you're so far looking forward and fucking, you know, got to do that and that. Yeah. But so the thing about stopping them smelling the flowers, isn't it, for a minute and just mm. appreciate what you've got. I think it's hard to do that, especially yeah, to, if you're in that mode, isn't it? Yeah. And and you're being successful. Why stop? Mm. What's stopping you? What do you mean? Mm. And when you're in the pursuit of success and greatness, and you're around other successful people, and you look at them and you think how sex successful they are. Yes. You're you see in this bubble. Yeah. And you're, you know, like, because in my world, it's like learning the traits of the greats, you know, yeah. studying the successful business people, reading the books, listening mm -hmm. to the podcast, you know, like I've got my heroes, but sometimes like you put them so much on a pedestal and I want to mm. be this person, it, yeah. it can, you end up thinking, well, who am I and what am I? And, and it can be a bit of a curse sometimes. Yeah. I just think it's that, it's that image of that guy and it, who's got a boat and all that. He's fucking mate, he's fucking he's nuts and he pulls out into wherever they can or whatever. Fucking, you know what I mean? This is it, I'm, I'm made yeah. And then the fucking somebody, someone else pulls up next to you with a fucking boat twice the size yeah. of yours. What are you going to do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's that thing, isn't it? I think some are very wiser than me and I, and I kind of live my life by it, would always say, don't judge yourself by people that are below you or people that mm. are above you. I think yeah. Yeah, all aspects, and I think you're right, it doesn't matter how far up the ladder you are, I think that always, that always applies, absolutely mm. always applies. Because for me, if you, if you put yourself, if you judge yourself by people below you, I think it can, I think it leads to arrogance yeah. and you're a little bit, so, a bit smug and all that. Mm. And we meet people like that all the time, don't we, in life, you know, looking down on other people. I don't understand that, it's mm. ridiculous. Um, and then I think as well, if you judge yourself by people that are above you, then you'll be, then you're, then it will be, you'll be bitter, and you, you know what I mean. It's a, you'll be jealous of what they've got, and I think both of those things are really, really negative things, mm. aren't they? I think you have to find your level where you are, and fucking be happy with it. Yeah. Isn't it? Done. Yeah. You know, you are where you are in life. I think there's always going to be people worse off than you, and there's always going to be someone better off. Mm. So where does that put you? Do you know yeah. what I mean? And how do you therefore find? who you are, who Jake is, you know, the happy you who's not over comparing yourself to anyone else. That's it. I think that's it. I think that for me, that's the key. When you're younger, you do that all the time, don't you? Look at, yeah. especially as an actor, look at him, your contemporaries, look at him, he's doing that, he's doing that, he's doing mm. that. Yeah, you know, and then you're doing better off than some of your peers. Oh, yeah. Well, Check me out. <laughs> yeah, so it's just, uh, it's exhausting, isn't it? Mm. So I think, I think probably when you get a little bit older and a bit more maturity and... and Maybe that comes with a little bit of success as well. If maybe if you weren't a little bit successful, you'd still have those traits. Mm. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know what it is. Mm. But in terms of what I'm doing, I'm very happy. And, yeah. it, and it doesn't really, you know, my life is not just EastEnders. You know, it's like it's family and it's, I've got a podcast and it's uh, my friends and it's, yeah. do you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, Let's talk about your podcast then. Yeah, it's yeah. good. We've done... We uh, were just talking about Joe Rogan's one, weren't we? So obviously you like podcasts like Joe as Rogan well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, podcasts are like, I'm pretty new to them, to be mm. fair. Uh, yeah. Four years ago, I think I got into podcasts, and it was like, how can such cool stuff be free? How yeah. can you get such access to such, you know, whether it's, you know, just entrepreneurial or money-making information or how-to stuff mm -hmm. or just 
really cool people that you'd go and pay yeah. to see live. Yeah. How can this all be free? And I like the fact it's so specific as well, yeah. isn't it? In terms of like, you know, you listen to a radio, 90% of it is just yeah. like waffle, isn't it? 10% mm. you might, oh, right. Mm. But a podcast, you can go straight to the, you know, you can boom, you can yeah. go straight And you've got the fast forward 15 second fast button for the ads. Fast yeah. forward. Yeah. I think, I think podcasts now as well, in terms of the technology, now it seems like they're really getting it together, aren't mm. they? Now you can literally go on, then there's a play button there and you press play. Yeah. Like, I'm not sure how accessible they were, I don't know, like when you started four years ago, whether it's that simple, yeah. whether you're on Android or whatever. Because you know, a lot of people I talk to now, they're still like a little bit befuddled by well, it. And they've got know, iPhones. I go, look, man, you've got Most a podcast people, app. 4% of the UK is to podcasts. Yeah. Six months it ago, was that me four me. years ago. That was yeah. me, yeah. What's a podcast? I didn't know what a podcast was. No. Yeah. Okay, you've got, a, you've got a podcast app on your phone. What the fuck's that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Suddenly there's a whole that purple world. app that you never even saw before. Yeah, there's a whole and world in there. It's I'm doing it all the time now. All that wealth of information yeah. that's just your finger. And you I'm never... talking to people now, I go, what are you into? They go, I don't know, this, that. I go, fuck, it's all in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's all in there. Crazy. Mm. Yeah, although everyone is listening to a podcast, so they've had that same experience <laughs> as us. Why did you decide to do one? Um, why did we decide to do one? We, well, we got approached to do one. Um, yeah. By my agent's brother, works for Bama, which is a mixed martial arts, like the British UFC. Mm. Um, he always wanted to do a fight podcast, but more boxing. Yeah. And he, he didn't know who he wanted to do it with. He had the idea for it. Mm. And, then, and then he met me. And then my, my best mate is Spencer Oliver, yeah. who uh, is Sky Pundit, but also ex-European champion. He's got an amazing story. He um, was European champion and had a horrible injury back to... Oh, no. Yeah, about, we about, before, yeah. yeah, about 20 years yeah. ago. Um, uh, which, yeah, he was 23 years old and he was defending his European title at the Royal Abbott Hall. And uh, yeah, he, he woke up three weeks later from, uh, from being in a coma. So obviously that's one of the, you know, that's the harsh reality of the sport. I mm. think, you know, think, you know, things have got better, I think, in, in that sense. Um, but yeah, so me and Spencer are just best mates and we were doing a thing called Boxing with the Stars which was essentially a charity event. So we, we did fundraising nights where we get people off the telly fighting each other, like mm. Wayne Bridge. And, and I did one. I, on my year off, I wanted to have a fight. And I can't, I can't do any contact sports when I'm under contract to EastEnders. So yeah. um, I do all the training anyway. So it was a good opportunity for me to have a little fight. So I did that and we put them on YouTube. And so all that stuff was really going well. And we, we, we just love it. We just love being around that, um, yeah. that world. You know, I, I really like it. I like fighters. I, I just think they're really interesting people. And, mm. Uh, and all that stuff. So yeah, so so that was it. Yeah, they sort of saw me and Spencer together and how we are. I'm like, yeah. All right, okay. Did you fancy doing a podcast? And uh, yeah, so so yeah, and we we had the set up here to do. It. I do um, some voice work for a, um, a gecko in America called the Geico Gecko. There's a, there's a CGI gecko. So I do. I've been doing that about 15 years. So I already had a studio here. So uh, so it seemed like the perfect thing. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's amazing, pound for pound, yeah. it's called. Um, and we just get an amazing guest. So we had Gary Lineker, um, Tyson Fury, we had Piers Morgan last week. And, it, and, it, and then we're getting all the fighters. Um, but the idea is like boxing is the umbrella that brings all these people together. Right. And we all love boxing, but you know, what's your story? And, and it's like the, you know, I th I, and it's another love, lovely thing that I love about podcasts is there's no time limit to it. Mm. And so if you're getting good concept, co content out of someone, it can just go on, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you just get to, the, you get to, you know, our thing is very much relaxed chat about so getting... So he comes over here and you just do it in your studio? We do it there, yeah, we always phone out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, oh, we're loving they, it. They yeah. phone in, you don't get to do them live. No, they we always phone out, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. But I think <clears throat> that's working to our advantage because, and I had a chat with Spencer about that, and I was like, why? Because we're just getting really relaxed conversations mm -hmm. with people, like Tyson Fury, we had him in Spain, Tony Belly was in Florida, yeah. um, Billy Joe Saunders, I think he was out in Spain. Mm. And, <laughs> and I think it's partly because they all know Spencer anyway, but, um, but also I think it's because they're at home. Yeah. Like they're, in, 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 like they're probably in their pajamas, you, you can hear the kids running about. <laughs> they're in a safe environment, yeah, they're not yeah. in a studio with fucking light, you know, and then mm. someone comes up to them, oh no, no, by the way, you can't swear or whatever, they can say yeah. what the fuck they like. So, um, so yeah, so, so what we're doing is kind of shining a different light on the sport that we love, but the mm. characters within it and the human side. And I think that what that does, for me anyway, once I met Spencer and Adam Smith, who's head of um, boxing at Sky, and I love boxing, I always go to all the shows and all that. Frank Smith, who's Eddie Hearn's number two. Mm. I just love being around it. So all of a sudden I was, I, was, I was able to go to all these shows and all these fascinating characters all around. Um, 
uh, I lost my thread there. But anyway, yeah, it's just, it, yeah, for me, sorry, that was it. The, the, so for me, so to get all to know all these guys and the boxers, what it does for me, when I see these guys fight, it gives you a different emotional involvement mm. because you've talked to them about their kids, you know, you've, you've, you've had a laugh with them, you've been out with them. Mm. Or, um, so no, yeah, it's, you're not just seeing the warrior, the fighter that goes yeah. into the ring, which we all love. Of course, these guys, are when you see them do the ring walk and all that and all the talk and, and you know, the way in and these guys in, in anyone's minds are warriors, aren't they? They go in, it's, it's a gladiator, isn't it? It's mm. a gladiator sport. And it's uh, one of the reasons we love it, but also, um, I think once you get to know the character and that these guys are uh, they're just bloody normal blokes, aren't mm. they? Going in there. Yeah. Um, I think it just gives you a different insight. Mm. Like when I did my one, when I did my uh, white collar one, um, Kevin Mitchell was there, he's a European champion. And so after we had the fight, ended in a draw, but it was great. I was knocked down a couple of times in the last <laughs> round and it was, it was amazing. We did the whole training and everything like that. It's on YouTube, it's on the Boxing with Stars YouTube account. So you can go and have a look. Um, but I, I was sitting and talking with Kevin Mitchell afterwards and he said, how was it? I said, I was fucking, I said, to be honest, Kevin, when I went in, going into the room, fucking terrified. Like, it's mm -hmm. one of the scariest things I've ever done. Like, I've been on the stage at the National, I've done live episodes of EastEnders, I've done Strictly Come Dancing. But I said, that, mate, was a fucking, one of the most <laughs> scariest things I've ever done. That, yeah. that, getting yourself into that thing of like, wow, this is nuts. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You're going to face someone who's going to, you know, says he's going to try and punch your face off or whatever. It's just a mm -hmm. weird thing. It's not a natural thing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't mind admitting that to Kevin, you know what I mean? I was like, oh, fuck, I was shit myself. Yeah. And he turned around to me, he said there wasn't a fight that he ever had when he didn't feel the same. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, man. Like, if you watch his career or whatever, I, you know, I'm a big fan of his when he was boxing, he's retired now. You would never think that. Yeah. You'd think this fucking, this guy's a fucking warrior, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's going in. But actually, yeah, he said, yeah, he said, I felt exactly the same, shit myself. Yeah. Crazy, man. Mm. So, for, so for us, that, that's the part of the sport that I love. I love the, all the characters around. I love the cuts men and I love the doctors that are there for 200 quid. Um, they're, not, they're not there because they need the money. They're there because mm. they get the best seat in the house, you know what yeah. I mean, and all that. So, um, so that's what we're doing on the podcast. We're getting these guys in and we're just hearing their story, really. Mm. So it's, uh, yeah, we've done 18 episodes, so I suppose it's quite young for a pod. Yeah. And we hit number one spot, number one sports and recreation podcast in the wow. UK about three weeks ago. Yeah. So I think it's a combination of the guests we're getting, because they're amazing. If you look at the list of people, it's nuts. Mm. Um, but I think it's also that we're doing something different from the other fight uh, podcasts that are out there, which are very stats and figures and very sort of like people selling fights, which is great. I love all those podcasts, yeah. but I don't think anyone's doing what we're doing, which no. is relaxed chat, you know, yeah. what's your favourite biscuit, you know, mm. and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's yeah, good. We love yeah. it. We're really enjoying it. Um, I, I feel like media is really changing um, because you know, 10, 20 years ago, the big stations there had all the all the airtime. Yeah, all the cards. And now, yeah. someone like me, I'm, I'm a nobody, and I can just set up a podcast. Yeah, absolutely. And just say what I want to say. Okay, no editing, no scripts. Yeah. Say what I want. I can pick my niche. You can. It's a very intimate medium as well, isn't it? I mean, you know, like you, your listeners are. Well, really you're between getting, their ears. You, yeah. You're in someone's head, aren't you? Exactly. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're going to get to know the real you, the very intimate you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I um, I think it's. I, I just. I, I think it's the future. I really do. Yeah, in America, I think so. there's. I think there's something like twenty odd percent of the population are well into podcasts, and in the UK, apparently, it's four. That's going to grow, though. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think. I think once you once you discover it, once you discover the world of probably got the same, same thing, yeah. like it, you're in. That, that it, door done. that's open. You never yeah, you can press. You know, it. you can switch. You can listen to a bit of it and then go yeah. off and do something else. Um, yeah, it's good. Mm. Really good, man. So yeah, we're we're like really yeah, just excited, mm. just just loving doing it because we we sit around talking shit about boxing anyway. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, all we've done now yeah, is put microphones. Put in front microphones. Of us. That's it. And people seem to be enjoying yeah. it. So. Yeah, you know, the, the podcasts that I like are sort of, and I like Joe Rogan for that, where he's very honest about, he says, I don't, oh, I don't know what I'm fucking doing. All I'm doing is, is talking. Yeah. Now, yeah, I like, you know, I like that. I like that honesty about, um, mm. about a podcast. I think that's what we're trying to do. I think we, we are very honest in terms of, we ain't got a fucking clue really, but we're yeah. just doing it. Yeah. And I think what happens is, I think, is that people listen, and I listen to Joe Rogan because I like him. Yeah. I don't give a fuck who he's talking to, really, but he does get some amazing guests. But mm. really, I'm into him. I like, I like spending time with him. Yeah. I want to spend time with you him. You feel like you know him, don't you? You feel like you're yeah, his mate. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're yeah. sitting around having a chat with him. So, um, and I think those are, the, those are the listeners you want to get, aren't you? Because they're, they're, 
because they're coming in because they want to hear you. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and I think, yeah, that, for me, that's just great because it's yeah. stripped down and it's... So all of that sort of... Uh, we're quite raw into it. You know, we're new to it. We're really new to it. Mm. So all that raw stuff, we like it. We just keep it all in. Yeah. We're just fucking about. We just, you know, we'll mess up and whatever. But I think it's part of the journey of what you're doing. I think people listening, they like it, don't they? Yeah. You're not trying to present a finished, polished thing. No. And there are plenty of podcasts out there, especially in the boxing world, that are like that. We mm. can't compete with them because they're, um, you know, great journalists and they've got access to all the boxers. So yeah. um, we're just doing, uh, doing that. But, but again, I think that's to our benefit because I think the people that come in and listen to it will listen to it because they like us. They like yeah. spending time with us and, and, uh, and that's what we're doing. So, mm. yeah. I just looked at your watch and it's not far off 11 o'clock. So I, I could stay here all day yeah, and that would no, be I'm, really I'm bad. Happy, I'm happy. <laughs> so we'll do a little just quick four or five quick fire. Yeah, and, go and for it. And yeah, then yeah. wrap up. Yeah, no worries. So, um, do you remember, and if you don't, it's fine, um, the best advice you ever got? The best advice I ever yeah. got? Um, apart from what I spoke earlier, maybe Barbara Windsor, don't change what you do when you mm. join EastEnders. Um, no, that's a really good question. I can't think of the best advice I ever got. I think along the way I got advice from lots of, lots of people and some of it wasn't so good. I think you have to pick and choose, don't you, yeah. as well. I think sometimes some people are well-intentioned and they give you advice, but mm. it, it's the wrong advice. That's Can you hard. remember any of that? Can you remember any really dumb advice you got? Again, no. There's nothing that really stands out for me. Mm. I asked Doug that last week, big producer, and he said, no, I don't remember any of the bad advice, because it was bad advice, and I don't remember that. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought, that was actually a good answer. Made me think, it's a really stupid question I've just asked. No, I don't think it's a stupid question. I think the reason I can't think of anything specific, good or bad, is because, because ultimately I think you've got to stand up for your own you got to, I've always stood by my own decision. Whether it's worked out that way or that way, I've always mm. stood by it. So I'll always take everyone's on board, but I think, I'll, you know, I've always been that way. I've always yeah. felt like if I'm going to make a decision, it's got to be my decision. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think I would rely on anyone to like, oh, what should I do? Or mm. I don't know. My wife is my most level-headed person I know, so she keeps everything grounded and yeah. uh, she makes the most sense to me. Mm. Yeah, because I'm in a crazy industry and she does nothing nothing she's got nothing to do with that world and, and yeah, I just think which that is really good I guess well. in a lot of ways. yeah I just think you just need you need something away from it don't you mm. like my whole life away from that is just I guess it's just very normal mm. just normal hopefully normal normal family yeah just normal friends I don't hang out with very many actors and all that and no, it's not you know when I'm what I just want to get away and talk about work mm. not bothered so I would say like if, like if I was a plumber if I was walking down the street, I wouldn't fucking talk about plumbing to everyone, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, fucking talk to me about plumbing for, you know what I mean? Yeah. But the first thing anyone does, if I walk <laughs> into a party, they want to talk about acting. Yeah, I'm I mean. embarrassed now because all I do is talk about <laughs> what I do all day, every day. I'm probably one of those annoying people. No, yeah, but you're passionate about yeah, what you yeah, do, which is yeah. different, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you know, everyone knows, kind of, not everyone, but most, a lot of people watch these standards, and they, so as they know you're an actor, the first thing they want to do is talk to you about acting. Mm. Fuck me. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know I, mean? I, I understand it's interesting. Yeah. I understand all that, but personally, it's like you know, I'm done. Mm. So that so that line for work and work and 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 life away from it is very clear. Yeah. You know, as soon as I drive out of that studio, I'm done. I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm just me. I'm just Jake. I just want, mm. just want to hang out. Is there anything in the world you really think you want to change, or just yeah, anything you think's really like it's got to be, it's got to be <laughs> rewritten and started again? What, of, of anything? Anything, like, anything. Yeah. Is anything you just feel really strongly about? Yeah, I mean, the world's a fucked up place, isn't it, fundamentally? So, where do you start, really? <laughs> yeah, and this is supposed to be the quick fire questions, yeah. I think it's a, it's a great question, but for me, it's just too simplistic. Yeah. But, you know, if I, if I said one thing... The whole then, world. Then like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty open-ended, isn't it? You know, there's a lot of shit in the world, isn't there, you know yeah. what I mean? So... That's why I think you have to, just on a personal, you just got to do what you can. You, you got to be, I think you've got to be a good person. I think you've got to try and be good to other people and all that stuff. Mm. It's hard, it is hard. And I think family's first. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, you just got to do what you can. Mm. But I haven't got any answers. And, no. you know, like, hey, that answer's as good as not having <laughs> an answer. It's a good answer. And then, yeah. um, is there anything about you that a lot of people don't know about? Um, that you'd want to share. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I don't know about love of boxing. I yeah. spoke, spoke to you about that. Um, I don't know. No, I'm just pretty, pretty regular, really. I'm not, you know, I'm not extraordinary. I, I think in some ways I have an extraordinary job or, or a job that's of interest to other people, but that's, that job doesn't really define who I am. And in fact, I I'm, I'm work very hard to make sure that that's very sort of, uh, I wouldn't say separate because it's a big part of my life, but yeah. um, it's not everything. Mm. So, yeah, no, there's parts I don't want people to know. That's fine. Yeah. You know? This podcast is called The Disruptive Entrepreneur, and the main theme of it is disruptive. I love mm -hmm. interviewing completely different people. Mm -hmm. And it's not disruptive in the sort of Silicon Valley tech sense of disruption, which yeah. I have no problem with, but this mm -hmm. is not what I'm trying to get across here. Mm -hmm. It's about meeting interesting people who challenge you to think. Um, does that word disruptive, does that have any meaning to you? What does that mean? Not really. No. Disruptive. Just is what it is, isn't mm. it? Do you think your character, because I like, I think your character is quite disruptive, would you say? In real life or are you talking about work? Which character are you talking uh, about? In uh, work. Yeah, in work? Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Max is great. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, wouldn't, yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't judge to say no, that. Yeah, sure, sure. I know everything about you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Max is disruptive. Yeah, of course yeah. he is. Yeah. Yeah. He's a fascinating character. Mm. Yeah, he is. Do you think it has positive connotations, being disruptive? Positive connotation, being disruptive? Mm, no. I can't no. think of any. Not in a personal sense, or some people just ca are ca just chaotic. I think Max Branning, obviously, it's a soap, so, so so all these elements are kind of they're all kind of you know they're quite they're written quite large, aren't they? Yeah. But my job is to to try and make him as human as possible and to to fill all those little details in. So mm. um, yeah, he's very disruptive, but I think it comes from. You know, I think I keep it very grounded in terms of where he's from, what his history is, what his family history is, the pain that he's had before, his growing up was horrible. I don't know, there's certain ways where you can say, right, you know, it doesn't really excuse your behaviour, but um, in that sense, for that character, yeah, I think all of his disruptive behaviour comes out of um, a sense of feeling a great injustice at the world in terms of how, 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 how he's reached this point and, and where he's at. Mm. And, and I think that's a, as a result of, you know, his whole upbringing and all that. Mm. So I don't think he can never move on from that. No. He's stuck in that sort of, uh, that anger and all that. So mm. things are fucked up for him, so he wants to fuck them up for other people. Yeah. But in my experience, look, many people are like that. Yeah. Many Just people. Thinking that. Mm. Many, many, many people. Mm. And, I, and I don't think they do it out of, uh, out of spite, or I don't, think they, I don't think they even know what they're doing. But I think it's almost like they have to jeopardise anyone, anyone else's sort of like what they've got, because mm. they haven't got it. And again, yeah. I think it's that thing about comparing yourself to other people. I think if you go down that road, it's, it's yeah. a minefield, isn't it? Mm. Because we all do it. It's a natural thing to, to do. But man, oh man, you know, it's, like I say, it's, it's no good either way, is it? No. It's no good. Mm. So, uh, yeah, don't be disruptive. That's mm. the thing. Why are you called a disruptive entrepreneur? Then? Uh, uh, because I think there's a positive side to it whereby, um, for example, you taking a year out of your life at a time when most people wouldn't do it in their career, mm -hmm. in a career where you're probably not, it's not the done thing. To me, that's a positively disruptive. Okay. I.e. you thought, you know what, I want to do something different in my life. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do what normal people do. Mm -hmm. It might be a risk, they might say no. Um, I often like try and push myself to do new things I'm not all that comfortable with. Yeah, I'm the same. I, do um, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like these podcasts are fantastic for me. You know, we were talking before about do I monetize it and all that. And yeah. I'm in a fortunate position in my businesses where I don't need to. Yeah. And like meeting new people is for me is a weird experience because I love meeting new and interesting people. I'm always really excited, but I'm always really nervous as well. Are they judging me? Do they like my podcast? Are they here just because... Do they know anything about me? Have they researched me? You know, I'm, I'm, I work, and I, all this goes do you, on. Do you still care that much? Yeah. Um, I just, yeah, I do care. Um, and it's not so much, yeah, I suppose I've always had, I didn't realise this was going to be a Rob therapy session, but you know, like, if, if it's, if it's yeah. shit, we'll edit this bit out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, there is a bit of a need in me to be liked. There has mm. been since I was a young kid. Yeah, but everyone's got that naturally, mm. I think. And I think you could say the same about actors. You know, it's like, Someone's has a theory like that people are actors because they want their emotions to be acknowledged mm. because they weren't acknowledged before, yeah. you know what I mean? But um, I, think that, I think sometimes that sort of stuff drives people on in yeah. life, doesn't it? Mm. I mean, I, you know, I want to come and meet really cool people and I want to get on with them and I want it to be great. One day, we always say this, the team that are here, one day we're going to go and do a podcast with someone who's a knob. 
and they're just going to be awful and horrible. And we're going to be like this. That was no one. Everyone's been yeah. really great. Have they? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone. Well, maybe everyone's just putting on a good side for you. Yeah, maybe. But one day we're going to be like. Is it the same team? Have you got the same team? Um, there's Tom as well, who's okay. involved in who do the, the sort of the Nick's head of design. And um, t- so you work um, as a team, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've got 70 staff in oh, the office, you? Wow. but th- th- these guys do the, all the podcasts, and you've been to a load of them, Harry, haven't you? And, I can't believe um, you do this as a hobby, though. Yeah. I think it's... Uh... It's the best hobby in the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Meet, meet really interesting people. And it is uncomfortable, you know, like I'm coming to your house. That's a big thing for me. You know, I respect the fact that I'm in your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm meeting someone new who hopefully I'm going to get on <laughs> with, and hopefully when I leave, I've added value to your life, or at least you, you think... No, I've, yeah, really, enjoy, I've right. really enjoyed it, yeah. And and, uh, yeah, it's, and, nice, and it's nice that someone's... Uh, I don't know how you came to me or whatever or how, why I'm here or why you're here. Mm. More, that, thing, to me, but, that really matter, but, To yeah. me, yeah, it doesn't really yeah. matter. Like, in my life, it's like, does it, you don't really, it doesn't all really have to make sense. Mm. And I, I'm the same as you. I like a little bit of chaos. Yeah. You know, speak to my wife, she probably feel, drives her fucking mad. But, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, there's someone in your house nearly no, 11 fine. o'clock at it's night. Fine. She's uh, used to it, but... Um, I'm the same as you. Yeah, I like a bit of chaos. Mm. Yeah, so maybe disruptive is good then. Mm. But I was—I would call it more chaos. Yeah, well, I, I more th- like control I chaos. I think it's the, it's the fine line, isn't it? Because yeah, but the, I think you're right. Unless you push yourself out and and you know, and meet, it's been real pleasure to meet you tonight. Thank you. But unless you push yourself out to meet, I don't know who you're going to be like walking in. You know, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. But um, but you're obviously someone who um, has excelled in what you do. I don't know like, 100 everything about you, mm. but you're obviously someone who's like doing incredibly well and just got like, yeah, obviously just positive, mm. positive in terms of what you're doing and that you're interested to meet other people that are positive in that sense. That's only a fucking good thing, man. Mm. Come on, let's do it. Yeah. Jake, thank you very much. Wicked. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you.